Hello everyone. Welcome to the problem presentation by Krishiv Mohan. This is conducted by Shumon program. In Shumon, our process is very simple. We send out worksheets every fortnight along with hints for each problem and students need to answer those problems and send us back via Google Classroom. They need to submit the solutions via Google Classroom. This is the process of Shumon and we also offer a solution discussion class at the end of every fortnight. The problems are specially designed to invoke critical thinking of students. Even some problems involve restless thinking until it gets solved. And there are a couple of activities involved in the worksheets, which are like forming a cube and uh, filling some grids with numbers. A lot of fun activities is involved. So our aim goes like this. We want students to think mathematics in a fun way. Sometimes it might happen that mathematics is very abstract and boring, but we do not do that. We aim to create fun along with mathematics. I would like you to try out our trial worksheet, which is for free. You can try it out at our shumonmath.com website. And we would be sending you through post and you can try out the problems and write your solution in the box provided below each question and then submit your answers through google classroom of course getting a hard copy will reduce the distraction through phones to the students so let's come to the presentation by krishi mohan krishi which fortnight's problem you are going to present i'll be presenting level three fortnight three problem eight Problem 8 states that we have two finite length plane mirrors and they are placed at some angle with a common vertex such that a light ray makes exactly four incidents on these mirrors and then retraces its path. So two mirrors are placed adjacent to each other. They have a common vertex and there is some angle between them. And then we shine a laser or some light ray and when we shine it, it makes exactly four incidents after reflecting off the mirrors and then it retraces its path. So we have to find all possible angles between the plane mirrors and we have to also find the ratio of first angle of incidence of the ray to the angle between the plane mirrors. Finally, we have to generalize these results if it makes an incidence before retracing its path. So this is the diagram. We have two plane mirrors. The common vertex is O and the light ray is AB and the angle of incidence is I angle between the two mirrors is theta. So let's say that i is equal to k theta for some k in rational number. And this k is the ratio between i and theta. So first, using angle chasing, we have to find the next angle of incidence. So first, we draw the normals from c, d, and e, and we label them. So using angle chasing, we'll find c, d, d, n. And when we find C, D, D, N, we observe that it is equal to K minus 1 theta, whereas the first angle of incidence was K into theta. This means that the angle of incidence has been decreased by theta, which means after every reflection, the angle of incidence will decrease by theta. Again, using angle chasing, we will find the last angle of incidence, which comes out to be K minus 2 into theta. So now we basically apply the triangle sum in the triangle F, E, N, and E, M. So when we do the triangle sum, we'll get 90 degree plus 90 minus theta plus K minus 2 into theta is equal to 180 degree. So finally, we'll, we will get K is equal to 3. So 3 is the ratio between I and theta. And I can vary anywhere in between 0 and 90. And theta will vary from 0 to 30 because the ratio is 3. Now we have uh, proved this for 4 incidents. Now we will see for n incidents. In n incidents, by our observation, we know that the angle of incidence decreases by theta after every reflection. But there are two exceptions for this. First, uh, there is the first incidence where the angle of incidence does not change. It is the first incidence. And the end point where it does not change. It just retraces its path. So the angle of incidence changes, changes n minus two times, excluding the two regions. This means that the angle of incidence decreases by theta n minus two times, which means the final angle of incidence will be i minus n minus two into theta. So we again do the similar triangle sum that we did earlier. 
so uh, we we'll substitute i is equal to k theta we'll get k minus n plus 1 into theta is equal to 0 theta can't be 0 so k is equal to n minus 1 and we substitute this in i is equal to k theta so uh, i is equal to n minus 1 into theta so n minus 1 will always be the ratio between i and theta and this is the generalized result for n incidence now we can use the simulation to understand this so basically the angle between the two mirrors is 10 degree and we are changing the angle of incidence and we observe that after every 10 degrees the light is retracing its path and this matches our theoretical observation so the number of incidence is increasing increasing by one after every 10 degrees And this is the experiment. So it almost looks like the diagram that we saw before. So there are four incidents in this one. And we are using a green laser torch to shine this. And then uh, we can finally use a protractor to measure the angle. So the angle between the two mirrors is 20 degree. And the angle of incidence is 60 degree. So uh, the angle, the ratio between 60 degree and 20 degree is 3, which matches our theoretical observation. And this is the path of light. These green lines are the path of light. And finally, this is the video of the experiment. So like in the simulation, just the angle between the two plane mirrors is 20 degrees. And we're changing the angle of incidence. So here are five incidents. And then we'll slowly change this into four incidents. Now there are four incidents. And then we'll change this into three incidents. So these are three incidents. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much, Krishiv. The presentation was beautiful and it is very inspirational. And did you do all these experiments at your home? Yes, sir. Very good. So these are really game changing and the work that you have done will definitely help you a lot in the future because I think you have understood how theoretical and experimental things matches up beautifully. That is exactly what we want students to learn as a fun. So thank you for your active participation in Shumon program.